Hey kids. My voice is not entirely reliable right now because um typically when I have a, a bit of a mental breakdown and end up uh, purging uh, uh, I won't say destructively because all purging is destructive but when I go a little too fucking hard on it I, I rarely purge hard enough or um, often enough that it causes my throat to bleed but uh you know it is what it is should be happening sometimes yeah i uh, ended up purging a bit too fucking hard and my throat is bleeding and as you can see pink is back by popular demand or by demand of shiny cute diva did i say that right i feel like you you wanted me to do pink and i've done this pink before i've done baby like cotton candy pink um and so this time i decided to add in some other colors and this is called unicorn it goes from pink to lavender to blue to green it kind of makes me dysphoric as fuck but I feel like if I'm a person who is trying to subvert the conventional thoughts of gender, who the fuck am I if I continue feeling dysphoric about something that isn't gendered, color isn't gendered, and I can't rightly call myself a, I don't know, fighter against convention if I'm not challenging it myself and in, in myself and so I've decided to go outside my comfort zone wear pink because who gives a fuck what I'm wearing and I shouldn't place all of this I don't know discomfort in a color yeah, it makes me look like a girl. Who the fuck cares? I am in a hotel right now. Um, two friends of mine are getting married and I decided to stay in a hotel or stay in the hotel where we're having it because I'm gonna help with putting up the decorations and stuff. My friend's father, he pointed out, uh, I guess like how well I speak and this is something that is not uncommon for me. Um, I, I do run into a, a fair amount of people who think that I am not a particularly eloquent speaker but I string words together better than the average person and better than I suppose would be suspected of a person that looks like me. I think that is mostly a product of, well, perhaps a, a combination of my education, but also the degree to which I think, because I spend so much time in my head. I know I say it a lot, I say it pretty often on the channel. But, I mean, it's absolutely true that I, I spend a lot of time with introspection. And so when you have these thoughts kind of bumping around in your head for extended periods of time, it's easy to kind of spit them out because they're, they're already strung together as, you know, concepts to me. They've, in a way, become more than just the thought itself where they, they've built on themselves and become like principles and like bodies of thought. Um, almost like how a delusion can kind of take on a life of its own. So it's almost like, like a flow chart or like a domino effect. That's how my, my thoughts are about myself and the world um, for certain things. Uh, and one thing that I have been thinking about for a while, that adversity 
builds character. I don't necessarily feel that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, and I, I, I realize those are concepts that are very similar. That, you know, going through some shit will help you to become a more well-rounded person. And I, I, I'm just very reticent to say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger because it's, it's kind of a, almost like a false equivalency, uh, because the things that you go through, like adversity and obstacles, they're almost... I don't know, they almost occupy a different space than your capacity for resilience. And I think it is unfair to characterize them as cause and effect. Because they're not exactly on the same plane. And it's not a one-to-one ratio. Uh, And... Let me try to explain what I I feel as far as the concept of obstacles making you a more well-rounded person. Because I think it's true, but I also think that it is... Well, it's not inclusive of the entire experience of, of being a person. And I don't know. It ignores something that I find that is essential to growing as a person. And that is introspection. I think that introspection is what builds character. What makes you a more well-rounded, more deep person. And adversity and obstacles definitely can cause you to look inwardly, to reflect and exercise some introspection and insight into the way that you think and feel and act. But... It doesn't have to be an obstacle. It doesn't have to be adversity. It doesn't have to be a trial. It doesn't have to be something that hurts you, that makes you think. You could just think. And I think that's uh, what a lot of people miss, is that they assume that they have to go through some shit to understand themselves. And you really don't. You don't at all. I mean... Life isn't without obstacles, of course, but to have depth of character and depth of your personality and identity and knowing yourself, that doesn't necessitate going through shit. It just necessitates thinking. You just have to think, you just have to ask yourself questions. And I think a lot of people get very fucking comfortable and not asking themselves questions. As a person who is neurodivergent and LGBT, I have asked myself a shit ton of questions. And I have a pretty expansive understanding of what makes me tick and how I feel and what that means to me. And a lot of it is born of this kind of feeling of incongruency with the mainstream human experience, but it's also born of just spending time with myself. I just like to spend time with myself. And as a scientist, as a person who thinks 
kind of in in this scientific way I am fascinated by myself and I want to learn who I am I'm quite self-absorbed that way not that I'm you know really preoccupied with looking good and being perceived a certain way by others and feeling validated but I am very very interested in understanding why it is I think the way that I think and act the way that I do like where does that shit come from I think it's not just interesting to understand it's integral and I think a lot of people that live life in the mainstream and live life without major setbacks and obstacles kind of take it for granted that thinking about the way you are and your place in the world isn't all that necessary. They kind of take it for granted because there is a space that you occupy that was made for you. And it's a comfortable space. It's not a space that you are shamed for occupying or that needs to be extensively explained to you. You just understand it to be the place that you belong. But in being a person who kind of exists outside of the mainstream, you have to make your own place. You have to make your own space. And you have to build your own understanding, not based on things that have been spoon-fed to you. And I don't think that it is problematic in any way to be a person who exists in the mainstream, but I think that it is important to question why. Because in that, I think there's a lot of space to understand why it is you are the way that you are. And you might end up finding out that you actually don't fit entirely into the mainstream. But you also might end up finding out that you do. And that's cool. That's fine. But it adds depth to your character, to your identity, to yourself, to understand who you are. Because even if you are a person who is just very, you know, paint by numbers, you're still very unique. Everyone's story is different and taking the time to reflect on the things that have happened to you and thinking about how those things have shaped your identity is just something that you, you should do. You should spend every day reflecting on just different components of your personality and your world. I just think it's really important to do that to kind of give yourself I don't know, this feeling of substance, of direction. I just feel more whole having explored myself. And I, I think that you will find that people will think that you are more articulate, that you are smarter because you have spent time reflecting on yourself and your place in the world. Hardship doesn't build character so much as the introspection that hardship affords us. But that introspection is not limited to hardship. And we shouldn't limit ourselves. 
especially in understanding ourselves. Yeah. That's it. I'll, uh, talk to y'all later.